Unless you've been living under a rock for the past weeks, you've heard about this show and I binged watched it. All of it. So now I gotta talk about it. Making a murderer. And first of all, I'm gonna give you a spoiler warning. It feels kind of weird to do that for a documentary series, but as information is given throughout this documentary series and that information leads you to other rabbit trails and ties back into other things, I just kind of see them as spoilers. And I'm gonna talk about some of them here, so spoiler warning. So Making a Murderer is a Netflix documentary series. It's about Stephen Avery. Well, Stephen Avery is one of the guys involved in this. It's Stephen Avery and Brandon Dassey. A little bit of backstory here. Back in the 80s, Stephen Avery was convicted of a rape that he did not commit. After he served 18 years of his sentence, DNA evidence comes out saying, hey, see, he did not do it at all. So he is released from prison, a free man, an innocent man. But the gross mishandling of the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department that locked him up, we're talking it is fishy as shit. I'm not gonna go over every little detail, but you should watch this series and watch it. This is in the first episode. It leads him to go, you know what? Those guys owe me some money, so he's gonna sue the county for $36 million. The insurance isn't going to cover it because they were all slime bags, so the sheriffs themselves are going to be responsible for that money, and three days before this all goes down, a girl named Teresa Halbach ends up missing. So they hone in on Stephen Avery. They're like, oh, he must have done it, so now he is on trial for murder. And this is where the spoiler warning comes in. He was found guilty, he is going to spend the rest of his life in prison without the possibility of parole. What this documentary does is shows us how the investigation and the trial was carried out, and it is baffling. It being a documentary, everything in here is footage. It's all courtroom footage, police footage, news footage. There are no reenactments. There are no actors portraying the people. It's all what you see is what you get. All of it, you watch it and you're like, I think this guy might have wrongfully gotten fucked out of his life. Clearly, this documentary series is one-sided. It was made by people who believe Stephen Avery to be innocent, so they want you to see that side of it. That being said, from what I saw in this documentary series, there is a fair amount of reasonable doubt still there, in which case you can't just say, beyond reasonable doubt, that Stephen Avery must have done this crime. There's some fishy shit involved. Again, I'm not gonna go over all the details. That would literally, it would take me 10 hours because this series is 10 hours long. But it really is fascinating how most of this shit happened. I mean, even in this murder investigation, he now has a conflict of interest between him and the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department. You know, the ones he was suing. And the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department, they were big on this investigation. They were a big part of it. The conflict of interest, a lot. they should have just been left out of it entirely, but they weren't. And of course, they found most of the evidence. Which that was part of Stephen Avery's defense. It's like, he's being set up by the sheriff's department. Was he? Again, don't know. Stephen Avery's blood was found in Teresa Halbach's car. Her car was found in his junkyard. Not even in the back of the junkyard, we're talking close to the entrance of the junkyard. Without ruining it for you, there is a scene in here. It's one of the holy shit moments that shows the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department could have had and use Stephen Avery's blood. It's one of those cliffhanger endings. You're like, I can't believe this shit. And that brings us to the other person who got bone fucked out of a life in this entire thing, and that's Brandon Dassey. Brandon Dassey is Stephen Avery's nephew. He's mentally slow. He has like an IQ of 60 something or 70 for perspective Forrest Gump had 75. So he's a simple 16 year old kid. These two cops get a hold of him and interrogate the shit out of him. His mother's not present. It's just them. And these cops strong arm the shit out of him until he confesses to this murder. The thing is, he's saying nothing happened. I didn't do anything. Nothing happened. They're like, now Brandon, we need you to confess. And when you confess, we can help you. So what happened? Nothing happened. Brandon, that's not the truth. We need the truth. What happened? You killed that girl, didn't you? This goes on and on and on to where they're like, something happened with her head. She was shot in the head. Something happened with her head, Brandon. What? Now you can see the gears are turning because these two cops, these authority figures, want something from him. They're saying, we can help you if you give us this. So he really wants to help them. So he's like, we cut her hair. They're like, no, Brandon, something else with her head. What happened with her head? We punched her in the head. And finally one cop gets so frustrated. He's like, okay, who shot her in the head? And then he's like, well, he did. And they're like, oh, okay, well that's your confession. And now you're going to prison for murder. And to give perspective, Brandon is mentally like a child. If you saw two adult cops doing that to a child, that should infuriate you. It should be no less infuriating here. Brandon's statement makes no sense either in this interrogation, like what happened, what happened? They keep pushing and his story is changing. The, the story just builds because they don't have, a, they don't have what they want. 
So Bran is trying to give them what they want in that he is making this outlandish story. And it's the lack of evidence corroborating Brandon's confession is part and partial why it's like, no, nah, that just didn't happen. Not only do you see these cops strong arm this fabricated story out of this kid, but the evidence just doesn't back it up. There's her blood is nowhere in the room, but in the garage, they found a 22 round, a bullet with her blood on it. Here's a scenario I'm gonna throw out there if I am thinking of scenarios. If, if the cops found the van, found her dead, and wanted to just pin it on Stephen Avery, they had her blood because her blood was in the van. What if they took her blood and put it on a 22 bullet that was in the garage? These are backwater hicks. They're out in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere, you shoot 22 at soup cans and shit. I mean, you just do that all the time. It would be an easy thing to do, and I only throw this out here because her blood is nowhere else in this messy ass crappy garage. If you shot her in the head, blood spatter would be everywhere on a bunch of shit. They bagged and tagged every little knickknack in this messy ass garage. Her blood was on nothing. Are you telling me that simple Jack with an IQ of 70 spot cleaned all the DNA from the bedroom and the garage? Dexter Morgan couldn't do that shit. That's just, it's too much for him to do. Unless he knows Winston Wolf from Pulp Fiction, I can't buy it. Again, with that reasonable doubt, that shit is there. As for the theory that the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department could have had Teresa Hallbach's vehicle before it was found in Stephen Avery's junkyard, I actually put a link below for a YouTube video that's like a three minute long scene from Making a Murderer. Watch it! And you tell me what you think. When Stephen Avery was serving 18 years for the rape that he didn't commit, there was actually something that came forward that absolved him of that crime before the DNA evidence actually did. And the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department was like, yeah, okay, click, and they did nothing about it. They've been corrupt before, so I see no reason why they couldn't be corrupt now. There's no trust there. Guys, in the end, making a murderer is fascinating. One-sided, absolutely, but fascinating. It shows the flaws of a justice system. It shows how when you go into a trial with tunnel vision like this guy did it and you don't want to see anything else, you're going to see exactly what you want to see. And I'd suggest watching it. If for nothing else, don't leave it at the documentary. Look into the trial. Look into the evidence. Look into things. I don't know. I just You start Googling stuff. You're like, I want to know more about this. And make no mistake, although I talked about some of the evidence in this video and some of the fishy situations, it's tip of the iceberg kind of shit. I mean, there's more to see in this show if you watch it. So making a murderer. Have you seen the series? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought comment below let me know and as always if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more click right here to see more